But what about 2024? With 2021's profits no longer in assessment, these heavy losses mean Birmingham City can only afford to lose in 2024 to avoid breaching the rules. Uh, the results, unfortunately, they haven't been they haven't been good. Um, they With relegation confirmed to League One, let's uncover the financial story of Birmingham City. Flashback to 2014 and Birmingham was stationed in the Championship. Across this decade, the Blues consistently remained in the bottom half of the second tier. But following these 10 years, we now know that the Blues were taken over by Knighthead Capital, their third different owner of the decade, and also suffered relegation to the third tier of English football on the final day of the season. On the sidelines, St Andrews saw a tremendous turnover of managers in the dugout since 2014. Clark, Rowett, Zola, Redknapp, Carsley, Cotterill, Monk, Clotet, Spooner, Karanka, Boya, Eustace, Rooney, Mowbray, Venus, Rowett, again. But what about off the pitch? What happened behind the scenes? You know, one season won't define where this club will end up. Revenues have typically veered around the 20 million mark. 2023 delivered 19.7 million, their best performance since COVID, but three and a half million shy off their peak in 2019. As we saw in our championship review, Birmingham's revenues ranked towards the bottom end of the division. So what drove this? Let's dig into the revenue streams. First, match day revenues, these fell 500k to 3.7 million, just over 70% of the max in 2019. Average attendances had steadily grown, but have not fully recovered post pandemic. 2023 saw under 17,000 at St Andrews, over 5,000 down from 2019. Next, broadcasting revenues increased to 9 million in 2023, but still remained 26% lower than eight years ago. Commercial income also continued to recover post COVID, delivering 7 million. By league position, there isn't a strong correlation between revenue and league position. And on average, Birmingham have generated 19 million revenue a year. You know, if, if if that was if if you should say that's as good as it's going to get, oh, you know, I'll be I'll be worried. Now let's dive into profits. After initially being in the black, it's been a roller coaster of financial losses for the Blues. The descent from 2016 to 18 in profitability resulted in a nine-point penalty deduction being handed to Birmingham City, and the Blues have lost 24 million in each of the last two seasons. So what's caused this, and what does it mean for 2024? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey out the revenue, and dive into staff costs. Following the Trillion Trophy takeover in 2016, staff costs surged as the new owners invested heavily in the team. However, since 2018 and that financial fair play penalty, Birmingham staff costs have steadily declined. 2023 saw 29 million spent on the wage bill, down from a peak of 39 million in 2018. As a proportion of revenues, staff costs remain at a staggering 146%, albeit less than 2018 when this was over 200%. But after staff costs alone, Birmingham were in the red for all seasons but one. Next up, operating costs. These steadily increased until 2019, then contracted during COVID. 2023 saw these rise to a peak of 12.6 million. There's not a lot of detail to analyse this increase, but at EBITDA level, the pattern from 2016 isn't promising for the Blues. Next, let's turn our attention to stadium and facilities. Since 2015, costs have generally been about a million, with the exception of 2019, where the club generated 16 million net income. To help profits post points deduction, Birmingham sold St Andrews to another group company for 22.8 million. Take that away and we see the impact it has on 2019's profits. Finally, we move on to transfer fees. Birmingham's transfer costs have been on a roller coaster, with the Blues generating net transfer profits just as often as transfer costs. 2018 saw the biggest net expense of 6 million, fueled by a number of buys, including Yotta Pelotero, Mark Roberts, and Maxine Collin. 2021's net profit of 19 million was driven by the sale of Jude Bellingham to Dortmund. 
Supplier sales certainly improved profitability in the COVID years, but what do these larger recent losses mean for financial fair play? On a three-year rolling basis, championship PSR losses must not exceed 39 million. Starting with operating profit, we must also include any interest paid to give a full financial loss before tax. Clubs are then allowed to exclude certain costs such as youth development and women's football. There are also COVID related adjustments for 2021, such as loss of income. These aren't disclosed, so we are in the realms of estimates. So feel free to robustly challenge these in the comments. As an estimate, we're assuming 6 million a year for allowable costs and all COVID related items net to zero. Add these in and Birmingham's PSR losses are estimated to be 38 million, just within the threshold. But what about 2024? With 2021's profits no longer in assessment, these heavy losses mean Birmingham City can only afford to lose 600k in 2024 to avoid breaching the rules. And, uh, the results, unfortunately, they haven't been they haven't been good. Um, they... How could the Blues do this? Well, Birmingham have secured new naming rights with owners Nighthead, suggesting this could be as much as six million in the year. However, their fall into the relegation places might see EFL and other revenues drop by a million. On top of that, Birmingham bought a number of players, including Dion Sanderson and Lee Buchanan. Those transfer fees could also add an extra 1 million in costs. Conversely, on the sales front, Tahith Chong and Joe Bellingham were the major departures. These could generate profits of 5 million. Add those together and Birmingham would still need to find another 10 million this year to be in the clear. And so that was a real concern for me. What else could Birmingham do to get over the financial line? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Finally, let's see if cash matches with the profit picture we've just seen. As usual, we're looking at the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, tells the same story. Other than 2015, cash has flown out of St Andrews consistently. Over 10 years, the Blues have seen 169 million depart the club. Now let's shift our attention back to transfers. Cash flows swung from in to out over the decade but the Bellingham transfer has brought in cash the last few seasons. In fact, over the decade, Birmingham have brought in 18 million of net transfer cash. However, that's not going to be enough to offset those operational cash outflows. Over the decade, the Blues have seen a total 152 million of cash head out of St. Andrews. So how much funding has been required? Since 2017, cash has consistently been injected into the club. Over the course of the last 10 years, 162 million has been sunk into Birmingham City. The Blues borrowings at the end of 2023 stood at 149 million. But with the Blues owners making big moves off the pitch, will they be able to restore the fortunes on it?